Well, let's stay uh, with this story uh, about Mexico deciding to ultimately decriminalize abortion. Uh, William Booth is a lecturer in uh, Latin American history and uh, the UG uh, uh, program director. He joins us from London. Uh, William, thanks very much for speaking to, to France 24 today. I'd like to start by getting your reaction to this decision by uh, Mexico's Supreme Court. Is it one of surprise or ultimately are we seeing Mexico uh, merely following a trend? Uh, I don't think it's a surprise, really. Um, Mexico is, in a sense, following a trend in that we've seen these kind of decisions in other parts of Latin America, but we've also seen this uh, at local level in other parts of Mexico uh, and indeed in Mexico City since 2007. So it's not it's not really a surprise. Uh, it's perhaps more of a surprise that when uh, the Supreme Court ruled on this two years ago, it's taken so long for states, many states still haven't implemented that decision two years later. Um, and so the GIRE brought this case in order to speed up the national ruling on this. Uh, and now that should follow fairly quickly. I mean, you make reference to states, I believe there are 20 states or thereabouts who don't essentially recognise the Supreme Court's ruling. I mean, what do we expect to happen there? Because you, you'll have this dichotomy, won't you? The, the states that have uh, decriminalised, but others who uh, rest firmly in the view that abortion uh, should uh, not uh, have the same access or people shouldn't have the same access. Will we see those states following suit or are we a long way off from that? No, I think we will. I mean, what this ruling means is it's no longer up to them. Uh, it's the almost the precise inverse of what we've seen in the United States with the overturning of Roe versus Wade last year, where the Supreme Court turned that right back to the states. Here in Mexico, the Supreme Court has asserted its own right over and above that of state governments. And so those states will have to get in line, even if it means some of them will be taken to court in, in, the, in the coming months or years. I mean, as we understand it, abortions, as it were, were not necessarily widely prosecuted in Mexico, but there were a number of doctors who refused to do so. That means that now they will have to, uh, you know, carry out an abortion if, if it's requested. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Mexico um, has seen significant levels of abortion. I think there were approximately one quarter of pregnancies ended in abortion um, over the period 2015 to 2019. So this is not, again, this is not a complete surprise. And there's a lot made in the media about, oh, this is such a surprise because Mexico is a Catholic nation. It's not an ultra conservative Catholicism that, that, that pervades Mexico. Uh, there is a small ultra conservative minority, but they are not really um, in power and they're certainly not in political power. How do you feel that this news will be going down in, in, in Mexico? Will we see kind of, you know, the staunch people who are staunchly against this uh, still uh, making their views heard or, or celebrations in Mexico today? There'll be lots of celebrations among um, women campaigners uh, and their allies who have, have pushed very hard for this. Uh, the Supreme Court's announcement was made in a very inclusive way. It was made, in fact, interestingly, in a trans-inclusive way as well. Um, this will be a big day for civil society in Mexico. Um, and I don't think that those in Mexico who are trying to stoke a sort of US-style culture war are going to have much success because the two candidates in the forthcoming election, uh, neither of whom is socially conservative. I mean, a lot of the kind of headlines I've been reading today about this have spoken about, you know, uh, access uh, to abortion for millions of Mexican women. That The reality, though, is that there's still likely to be a disparity between those who can access it and those who are hoping to access it, one would imagine. That's absolutely right. There's a huge difference between decriminalization on the one hand and the provision of easy access uh, to abortion uh, and other reproductive health treatments to women in Mexico. It's, a, it's almost a separate issue, but this is an important step in, in that chain. And if you have a government coming in which is going to take women's health care uh, and reproductive rights seriously, then hopefully that provision will follow. I mean, can we expect a pushback from uh, the church uh, in all of this, the Catholic church in the country? To some extent, though, as I said, it's not uh, it's not completely dominated by an ultra conservative wing. There are plenty of progressive Catholics. You have to remember that, you know, Latin America is pretty much the home of liberation theology, which is a, is a very socially progressive branch of Catholicism. And in many parts of Mexico, there are people who adhere to that that brand of Catholicism. So I would not expect to see um, certainly an impactful pushback. There will there will, of course, be people uh, within the higher echelons of the church saying that this is the end of civilization and so on, but they'll, they'll be really pushing against the tide.
I mean, you might think I'm slightly off topic, but of course, this decriminalization comes as uh, Mexico uh, announces, you know, that the two rivals in elections in 2024 will be women. Is this, again, a reflection of a country where uh, the, you know, social uh, customs are, are, are changing? Are we moving forward uh, in terms of, the, you know, a, a developing country? Yeah, I mean, it's not something completely new again, but it is a significant um, moment. Um, Claudia Scheinbaum, who's the, the candidate for Morena, was mayor of Mexico City before she stood for, for president. Um, Xochitl Galvez was uh, a deputy for the PAN, um, a, a, sorry, a senator rather, um, since 2018. Um, so, th so these women have held high office before. They've they've held other important positions within politics before too so it's not a complete change but it's certainly something new that there's going to be two, the two front runners are going to be women and the elected president is almost certainly going to be a woman uh, next and that was that will mark a significant change for mexico and is public support just briefly for you will in public support strong for these two women Yes, in different ways. Um, so Claudia Scheinbaum's going to have the support of many who are uh, supporters of the current president, AMLO, who remains very popular, retains a, a popularity rating above about 60%. She won't take all of that with her. She's not as proven as a politician yet as him, but I would expect to see her as the favorite, certainly. Um, Xochitl Galvez has, has really upset the race, um, but she's got a, a quite charismatic personality. She has drawn supporters to her. The problem for her is that she's attached to an alliance which has three very discredited parties in it. Um, and so if she, can, if she can push forward her personality beyond those party identities, she could give Scheinbaum quite a run, but I would still expect uh, it to be around 60-40 in favor of Claudia Scheinbaum uh, for the next president of Mexico. All right, William, we'd love to speak more uh, with you about this. There's plenty to unpack. We are out of time, though. You're a lecturer in uh, Latin American history and the EG, UG, I should say, programme director from London. Thanks very much. Thank you.